Verse 4, Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. This means that within us, while praying, various ideas come to mind, and that's the devil's work as he doesn't want us to finish our prayer. Does the Lord hear us? Will he respond? Is someone like me worthy to speak to our Lord? Get out of here so that you're not in the Lord's sight again. All those ideas come from the devil, of course, because God's eyes were continuously on Jonah while he was in the belly of the whale. Notice Jonah says, Then I said, which means, I said to myself, or I said in my mind. The ideas are wrong, not from prayer. This teaches us that no matter how bad you feel about yourself and you imagine that the Lord can't even look at you, remember these are attacks from the devil. At this moment, the Lord is looking upon you with the utmost tenderness and love. No matter what you've done, you are his son. He only looks at you with love. Verse 4 continued, Then I said, I have been cast out of your, your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. Notice what Jonah did here. He refuted a thought with a thought. Doubt was defeated by hope. And this is what is important in the war of prayer. Do not accept thoughts saying the Lord does not hear us or the Lord does not answer us on the day of our distress. Respond to doubt with hope. Answer Satan's voice with verses from the Bible. Don't just give up. Notice the degree to which Jonah's hope reached. He didn't think he'll just get out of the whale, and he didn't think he would just live, but rather he believed he would live, return to the temple, and continue his service. He didn't say, let me just get out of this alive, and then we'll see if I can be a prophet again or not. No, he said, I will look again toward your holy temple. How audacious! To that degree, Jonah? Yes, Lord, I belong. I sinned and messed up, but still I am your son, and I am your prophet, and I will look again toward your holy temple. The word again in this verse is comforting. It's used also in a comforting verse in Micah chapter 7, verse 19. He will again have compassion on us. Meaning, God forgave you yesterday, and the day before yesterday, he will again have compassion on us today and tomorrow and always as long as we return with repentance, seeking salvation. This word again is full of hope. Our Lord won't deny you mercy as long as you're true. He continues in Micah 7.19, And will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea as if the whale was a living submarine created to bury Jonah's sins in the sea, and then he came out cleansed. The repentance that he showed inside the belly of the whale threw his sins into the depths of the sea, so he came out of it as clean as if he had never sinned. As you notice in chapter 3, God does not blame Jonah. It says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh. It's as if chapters 1 and 2 never even existed and the story started from the beginning in chapter 3 with a clean slate. How beautiful. God didn't say anything like, Wasn't it rude to leave and ignore me? Why do you belittle me before the sailors? No, none of that. Why? Because he repented and casted his sins into the depths of the seas. Another verse with the same meaning is in Isaiah 54.7. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. Due to the severity of a trial or tribulation, a person comes to feel forsaken. He says to God, You left me. I have no solace, no relief, nor aid, nor anyone to even stand by me. For sure you have forsaken me. Then our Lord answers, Yes, I have forsaken you, but only for a moment, and I know exactly what is going to happen. And with great mercies, I will gather you. I will help you. Why are you sad? With a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. For God, a thousand years may be a day, and vice versa. So moments are different. But with everlasting kindness, I have mercy on you. Isaiah 54, 8. There is an important issue here to mention. Sometimes a person 
is angry with himself or at people and empties his anger out on God or people. Sometimes a person is angry at his mistakes or himself or the people around him. The best treatment for anger is prayer. Do not expect much relief when you talk to people, which is not a solution, nor is reprimanding yourself all the time. Probably you'll get even more tired if you do that. The solution is that you seek God and say to him, Oh God, I am bad, I sinned, I messed up everything, and those around me are not good, and the conditions are harsh, but I have no one but you. Praying is the cure to anger. Remember this rule whenever you are angry. Jonah's ang anger, when he was not praying, made him ask for death three times in four chapters. When he was angry and didn't pray, he said, Take me. The only time he got angry and didn't ask for death was when he entered the belly of the whale because he prayed at that time. Whenever the thought of giving up and wanting to die comes to mind, be sure that it is from the lack of prayer. And the only remedy for it is to seek our Lord and just pour out your heart in front of him. The fathers say that prayer gives birth to hope and hope gives birth to prayer. That is, both of them are the mother of each other. Meaning when you pray, you regain your hope and believe that things will be better, that God is still your father, that what has happened, that what has been messed up will get fixed. This is hope and hope brings prayer. Meaning when there is a lot of hope, then you pray more. As the Bible says in Psalm 62, 8, trust in him at all times. You people pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us.